We've done most of the hard work in this app and the next steps will be relatively simple. We're going to create the edit and delete employee functionalities. And for that, we need to do a bit of work in the employee service. So we need to create three methods in the iEmployeeService interface. We need a getEmployee method, which will receive an ID as a parameter, a deleteEmployee method, which receives an employee as a parameter, and an editEmployee, which also receives an employee. The getEmployee method returns a getEmployee response. So let's create this model in the responses folder. Then let's implement all of these methods in the class, starting with the getEmployee method. First, we're creating the response object. And I have to return that response. And we're going to grab the code from the getEmployees method and paste it into our method. The code is very similar. We just need to modify a couple of things. And we can't forget to inherit the base response in the getEmployees response model. And to get the employee, we need to call the first or default async method of the employees DB set. And you could use single or default, but it's my personal preference to use first or default. And you are assigning the employee in the get employee response to the employee coming from the database. And I always use default instead of just first or just single because it returns null if no objects are found instead of throwing an error. For the delete employee method, we're going to copy and paste the code from the add employee method and just modify it accordingly. We need to call the remove method in the context. And we can't forget to add the async to the method's signature. Again, the code for the edit employee method is very similar to the add employee. But we're calling the update method of the context. And don't forget to change the response messages. Now we need to create a button that will link to the employee's detail page. So let's create a new component and that will be the table button component. Then we will write some HTML code with bootstrap classes. And we will add a click event with the onClick directive. That we we'll use a parameter of the type event callback. And we're calling it on click callback. We use this event callback so that this button can be used in other components. So we are adding that button in the employees table. So we're creating another cell with a TD tag and adding the table button tag, associating the onClick callback parameter to a method that we're going to create. This method will navigate to the employee detail, and for that we need to pass the employee ID. Then we will create that method, which will simply navigate to the desired page. And we have to pass the employee ID to that route. Then we can create our employee detail page, And the first step will be to add the route. And we need to specify that the parameter in the route is an integer. 
then we need to create a property of this component for the employee ID parameter and create a field for the employee which will come from the database and use the lifecycle method on initialize async and in this lifecycle event we will grab the employee from the database and I can't forget to inject the employee service along with the navigation manager so I'm setting the employee field to the employee in the response and in this page we're going to have a form which is identical to the add employee form so we can copy and paste the code and since the form is identical you could create just one page for the add or edit employee but it's my design choice to keep those separate because these pages will have different needs in larger applications and it's easier to maintain if they are separate in my humble opinion of course this form will be associated with an object of the type add employee form so we need to have a field for that and on valid submit we're going to call the edit employee method so we need to create that and we will leave it empty for now and if we run the app let's see if it works we can see the button in the employees table and I'm getting an error and that's because I forgot to add the dollar sign to the string that sets the route to this page which means that the parameter wasn't actually being passed so if we test again now the page is opening but we still don't have the data from the employee that we want so the inputs in this form are associated with the add employee form object so for the form to be populated we need to associate each property of the incoming employee to the properties of the add employee form object so we are essentially mapping one object into the other so we can test again to see if it works so let's try to see the detail page for this Felipe guy and the form is populated with his data perfect let's see how we can update this employee first let's change the content of the button from submit to update in the edit employee method we need to map the data back again from the add employee form to the employee object which is what our edit employee method in the service expects and for now once we update the employee we go back to the table then let's add a delete button which we'll call a delete employee method and this button will be of the type button because if we use the type submit we're going to call the edit employee method which is the method associated with this form so in the delete employee method for now let's simply call the delete employee method in the service and navigate back to the table so we can test to see if it works let's try to update Felipe so we're going to give him a raise and change his position to CFO and it works then let's try and delete him and he has disappeared from the table and you can try the same with other employees so that's it for now the CRUD functionality for this app is finished in the next lesson we're going to add a confirmation model to the delete method and we'll enhance the user experience 
with success in error messages.